Hello everyone, this is episode one of Here Comes the Pitch, a podcast about pitching story ideas. I'm your host, Dirk Heron, and in today's episode, I will be pitching a scary monster story called Cthulhu Lake to my guest, Stuart Johnson. I would compare this story to movies such as Jaws and Godzilla. Well, without further ado, here comes the pitch. Uh, so how was your New Year's? What did you end up doing? Um, <clears throat> we went to a, we went to a, uh, like a rooftop party in downtown Phoenix. Oh. And, um, my brother proposed to his girlfriend there. Oh, so wow, went, that's awesome, man. It was really crazy, yeah. <laughs> that's... And then, you know, he accidentally ordered, um, a couple of bottles of alcohol that were like $300 a pop. Luckily, my cousin was there to, <laughs> to help us out on the bill. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah. oh, that was my New Year's. <laughs> well, that's, uh, I don't know, that's kind of a... Uh, it was fun. A memory, a monumental... Uh, well, especially for your brother. Right, yeah. Um, that's, that's pretty cool, man. It's, a, um, it's always interesting to like kind of witness something, like a pivotal moment for uh, you know a couple or, or yeah. someone. Um, so, but yeah, three hundred dollar <laughs> bottles of alcohol. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bottle of alcohol that you could go to the store, like you could go to Walgreens and probably get it for like forty bucks. Right. But they charge you. <clears throat> they charge you like three hundred dollars when you get there. So. Well, that's <laughs> bottle service. Yeah, bottle as, service. As they call it. It's a it's highway robbery is what it is. So, <laughs> so um, what we're gonna do is I, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna pitch first. But um, what I wanted to kind of get into um, was that I think that there's some comparisons to other stories, um, you know, sp- specifically uh, movies mm-hmm. that uh, come to mind. Uh, there's one movie uh, that comes to mind because it's like a complete homage to that movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but what it leads into could be anything, and that's where I, I'd like to pitch it to you, and yeah. then we can kind of grow upon that. But uh, before I get into that, um, you've seen Jaws, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, what was your, like... Like first memory of seeing Jaws, like when um, were you young? Were you a young kid? Yeah, or? I was pretty young. Uh, my mom used to watch it, you know, and she probably it was I was probably young enough that she didn't know I was watching it. <laughs> she uh, so it, it, it frightened me, you know, and something that even today like still lives with me when I go to the ocean, just because in the back of my mind I'm always like, but what about Jaws, you know? So. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, but that's basically, and, and that's the crazy thing about the movie is that it kind of lives with you still, you know? Yeah, and, and I think that, like, it's one of those movies that kind of grows on you. Like, every mm-hmm. time that you see it, you uh, recognize something different. You recognize that it's not necessarily about the shark. It's about, like, these three guys mm-hmm. and, and the differences in their lives and uh, how they're just completely different from each other. Mm-hmm. Um and how they have like sort of different motivations mm-hmm. on uh, about if they find this 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 shark what what what's what's their um i don't know uh would you say like their goal i guess you know you have the the sheriff who right. just wants to like protect the people you have mm-hmm. the scientist who wants to uh study it like yep. uh, and then then you have the the hunter who just wants to kill it yeah you know and that's and you got the mayor who wants is worried about the bottom line yeah exactly <clears throat> so there, there's there's like several different characters of like dealing with this problem mm-hmm. um and then it's it's more about you know the relationship and friendship that they uh, garner through this process, yeah. um, but it's also a scary movie, and it's also the um, they they call it the the movie that coined the phrase blockbuster. Right. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. It's it's one of those movies that like I think at a young age I didn't appreciate, mm-hmm. 
you know, I, I think that uh, it was kind of boring. <laughs> and then I think that it it, uh, it got to a point where as I got older, I started to like understand why it's such a great movie and why it's such... It's exactly why it was so good, you know. <laughs> yeah. But... Um, did you ever read about all the backstory behind it, like all the drama that was going on behind the scenes? Um, I, I know a little bit about it, like how, um, you know, the the shark didn't work very yeah. well. Yeah. Um, I actually heard about how the shark was actually supposed to be in the movie a lot more, yeah. and um, that Spielberg just couldn't get it to work. It mm -hmm. kept sinking or, um, you know, um, and whatnot, and it actually made the movie better. Uh, that it wasn't in it so much that right, it like yeah. that uh, like yeah, that's what creates the tension right the uh, monster like the unseen yeah the monster kind of thing right yeah. exactly and then and then that's what gave him the idea of focusing on uh, you know the the civilians and and their uh, their reaction to something that that's so sinister mm -hmm. that that's in these wa in the water mm -hmm. <laughs> and i think that's what scares people the most is like like um knowing that there's something there mm -hmm. but not being able to see it but like um fearing that's that why every time i'm in the ocean i feel something on my feet i'm out of here <laughs> getting out of this water right now <laughs> so um so you know, and I, it, it, it's a monster movie, yeah. like to its core, it it, mm -hmm. it is a monster movie, um, and uh, I think that that's where I'm going with this. Um, but uh, so I, I'm just gonna pitch it to you. Cool. All right. Um, so the story takes place in East Texas. To, uh, east East Texas, and uh, there's a a huge lake that's called the Sabine Lake. Um, it's it, it it actually borders between Texas and Louisiana, mm -hmm. and it, it's a huge lake. It's like 14 miles long uh, and seven miles wide, and it's kind of like a little tourist attraction. Um, there's a small community that lives around it, um, and. What's interesting about it is that there's this thing called the Sabine Pass, which actually kind of leads in to uh, the Gulf of Mexico. So it's it's a salt uh, salt um, salt water lake, cool. and uh, so a lot of people like to fish in it because, like you know, you have like those kinds of fish and and um, but. Um, what the story is about is that, like, the community that lives there have uh, started to see sightings mm -hmm. or there's been, like, kind of stories of, like, this creature that uh, sometimes pops up and has, like, been feeding off of livestock that yes. um, these small farmers in the area um, have and, uh, and like... Uh, there's this meeting that takes place, like it's a com communal meeting where, um, you know, the police are there, mm -hmm. like uh, Port Arthur police, which are, is, this is a real place and everything. Okay. And like, I thought, I did a little bit of research. I think that it's it's a little interesting uh, area. And then also like the US Coast Guard is there, of course, because like, you know, people use the pass to get mm -hmm. into America as well. So like they're oh, yeah. and also kind of like being aware of like the Gulf of Mexico and like the possibilities of people trying to get into the United States. So there's there's kind of this weird community <clears throat> that ha that has like a you know the government and military is also kind of a part of mm -hmm. but it's never been like uh, such like there's never been really a problem and, right. and and the thought that like there's this creature that like you know is is it's killing small animals it hasn't killed anybody mm -hmm. you know and and it's only of course seen at night and like <laughs> and so like people have like been you know 
pretty much just saying that like like it's this Bigfoot it's like this it's like a local legend local legend yeah. but it's it's recent and mm-hmm. like um, so there's this guy that kind of like stands up at the meeting and tries to explain to them that this is a thing that's been around for a long time it's just now it's finally made its way to uh, land Mm -hmm. and it's something that we need to worry about and you know he's he's kind of like this you know amateur scientist he's he's not a very like uh sought after person in the community he's kind of crazy mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. what what is interesting is that the only person that's ever actually visually seen this like went crazy and um and that that's what this farmer is trying to plead to the people is that like you know my my wife you know, like she went, you know, batshit crazy, mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, this is a problem, and we need to figure it out. And mm-hmm. so, <laughs> so this guy tries to tell this story to like this this older community um, that. Uh, like, have you ever heard of the the story Cthulhu? Mm-hmm. Um, have you ever heard of Cthulhu? Like uh, the the H.P. Lovecraft uh, Not story? Really. No, I have never really heard about it. Okay, well, Cthulhu is like he's kind of like this ancient cosmic um, entity mm-hmm. that um, in some of H.P. Lovecraft's stories is like, especially. Um, um, in the mountains of madness, um, that it's like this 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 monster that's um, w- that's sleeping, and that one day, you know, he will wake up, and mm-hmm. it's like Armageddon, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, and like some people like worship him and everything mm-hmm. like that, but it's just something like. That uh, it's inevitable that, like, at some point, Cthulhu is going to wake up, and so this guy. Actually, I want to kind of tell you as well that, like, I've been kind of developing this into mm-hmm. a comic book. Oh, sweet! Um, That's cool. And yeah, I actually got to. Um, there's this comic book challenge called the 24 Hour oh, Comic yeah. Book Challenge. I just I actually just started watching a little documentary on that. Oh yeah, the the one that I'm a part of. The the web series. Uh, it's on. It's on. Actually, it's on Hulu. It's a documentary about. Oh, they, the twenty four hour comic book they challenge. They do one in on in Seattle, I think. So yeah. Um, yeah. There's. Um, I couldn't really tell you about the history of it. Like you probably know more than me, right now. But um, there's this guy Russ Kasmierzak that like uh, he's been doing it for years. Mm-hmm. Where like he, you know, devotes one day, twenty four hours, to like making a comic, and he he actually gathered us up like four artists, and then like uh, videotaped us for twenty four oh, hours, um, uh, making our own comic. That's cool. um, Spoilers, I wasn't able to finish. <laughs> you know, that happens. <laughs> that but I happen. feel like, you know, I, I came up with some pretty quality yeah. stuff, other than, like, the quantity that's asked for. Um, but, um, so, <laughs> let me show you a couple pages of, of, like, what I was drawing. Um, so, what this guy tries to tell um, the people is that... Um, there was an, you know, there, there's the thought of like the, there's this huge asteroid mm-hmm. that uh, killed all the dinosaurs, right? And um, actually, um, this is this is recent. This happened this la- uh, this past year, that like um, in in the south of uh, the Gulf of Mexico, that's where they think that the 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 asteroid hit and um they recently started drilling oh, really? um in that area to like to possibly figure out um you know to prove more behind the big bang theory that like the that this asteroid which they call the planet killer mm-hmm. um is true and that this is uh, this is where it landed um is it underwater now yeah, well, it, it's it's really crazy, man. Like, um, if if you uh, look at it, because it's like uh, I think it's called like the 
Chicolo Peninsula, and um, it's like these huge rings, like mm-hmm. so that when it hit, it like created these like craters, and uh, and so it looks like this like spiral island kind of thing, <laughs> and it's weird. It's very strange looking, like um, and so they just recently started drilling to like help try to prove that theory mm-hmm. um, that that's what killed the dinosaurs. So. What this guy tries to tell these old people is that that this 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 asteroid was actually a being from another world, mm-hmm. and that sure the impact did wipe out a lot of the dinosaurs, but it was Cthulhu that actually made the dinosaurs extinct. Oh, wow. He actually ended up feeding on them, and and <laughs> until they were completely inst- extinct. That's cool. Um, and so he pretty much ate all the dinosaurs. <laughs> and then what he says is that uh, it went back to sleep, you know? Like, it, it came to our planet, it fed, mm-hmm. and now it's hibernating. And so it's been like, you know, hundreds of millions of years have passed, and and we're messing with its home. Right. And this thing that like is starting to show up is like one of its children, it's one of its babies. And like if we've woke that up, there's the possibility of waking, you know, mama up. Yeah. And so what we need to do hopefully is to stop this drilling. Um he's already been trying to do this. Like you know, of course he's like this kooky scientist. That so like, the drilling is actually potentially disturbing. The disturbing <clears throat> the nest right. that uh, Cthulhu uh, is, where he is or she is, and um, yeah, the babies are starting to wake up, and so his 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 proposal is to uh, capture the baby and then take it back to where the nest is and then release it and hopefully it'll go back to its home and like you know everything will be fine <laughs> you know uh, but so of course nobody believes him but mm-hmm. there's this like kind of rookie US Coast Guard uh, member she is just like well if this is what needs to happen then I'm willing to do it and I thought that that maybe like that's like maybe the daughter of like uh, her mother went crazy and so like she's like gotcha. trying to help out that she's she you know she's so vested in this community because she grew up there right yeah. and and luckily she was uh, stationed there as well and uh, and so she's willing to help and she has a boat, but it's like not the greatest boat. <laughs> it's uh, it's a, it's like an an old uh, mm-hmm. netting boat, a yeah. trawler, and uh, so she's willing to allow him and the scientist uh, to to go on this trip, but he's not necessarily a hunter he doesn't know how to like hunt this thing so they need to recruit a hunter (laughs) and that that gets into uh this i think interesting and funny character that uh he's kind of like the local drunk but he's also um he, he does have like a history in in the town and so like you know he it we go to the bar, you know, he's trying to ask for another drink, the mm-hmm. bartender's cutting him off, he's like proclaiming that like, you know, I caught this huge shark that, uh, you know, is behind the bar, uh, mounted behind the bar, and, uh, you know, it's not even that big, it's like, <laughs> but but it was, it, but it was in the lake, so that, yeah, yeah. that's that's why, it, like, people were... Uh, I think that's another way of like hinting towards Jaws that yeah. like this 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 shark that was like terrorizing. Uh, it's kind of like drawing that connection. Like, yeah, of, like you said, in homage. And then um, and then the the amateur scientist shows up and is like, I'll, I'll get the next round. And then he, you know, kind of recruits him. You know, tells him this like crazy story, and of course he's laughing at him. And then like he, and then he says, Well, I'll pay you. And then he, and then he's like, mm-hmm. You got a boat. And then that's when the boat is like 
pretty much uh, introduced and everything. Um, so while they're on the boat, he ends up telling the story because I did mention that like he he has like a past with this thing, mm-hmm. and uh, he ends up telling the story about how when he was a child, um, him and his father were out into the Gulf of Mexico, um, fishing. His his father was kind of a drunk, had fallen asleep, and didn't realize that his child was like kind of playing too close to the edge of the boat uh, with some toys and ended up like a pretty much about to fall in and then this tentacle comes and like grabs him and he thinks um, that like he was a goner you know mm-hmm. yeah. like at, at, at one point you know his uh, his dad wakes up, realizes his son's gone, is also pulled in, mm. and but there's like this um, when he was under the water, um, and the the creature had had touched him with its uh, its tentacle, like there was this like telepathic connection with okay. the creature, and and that's how he's able to like prove that what he that story that he originally told is true Mm -hmm. that like he saw this vision and he knows that this is leading to the the end of earth if if we don't try to do something um so so he takes it seriously oh he takes it very seriously and 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 the thing is is that like you know his his father was killed right yeah um and so he you know he thinks that like in a way he feels that uh um maybe because he was innocent that the 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 creature allowed him to live Mm -hmm. and and it's funny because like i i I just recently thought of this that like maybe the the hunter guy is just like well maybe he just realized that there was a bigger fish to feed on which was your father (laughs) and let you go so that he could focus on that and 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 then you know like it's just a way of him like uh uh I don't know. Just feeling like maybe everything that I, I believe in is like uh, um, the, he's contradicting in right, a sense. Yeah. Um, this, this is another huge like splash page. It's kind of cool. Like of course, since we know that the 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 the, the monster had been feeding on pigs mm-hmm. uh, from the farm, that that's what they do is they end up putting like some pigs down in in a in a net. <laughs> And to like lure him. That's kind of uh, cool. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so they end up catching it, of course, and and they're bringing it back to its possible home, and of course, what happens, and this is would would be the end of the the first issue, mm-hmm. uh, is that Mama's woke up. You woke like, her up. <laughs> so it's. It's inevitable. Like yeah, now yeah, we're yeah. at a point where now we're dealing with this huge creature, and um, so I guess that's where I need help. Mm-hmm. You know, like I don't know really where to go from here. After that. After that, like and that we've this as you can tell that like this is a, a definitely an homage to Jaws. Right, it's, yeah. it's 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 following kind of like the the same tropes and and uh, storyline as Jaws, but where could it go from here? Right, is exactly. is the like the interesting part and yeah. and and I think that that kind of plays uh, you know, I see this as like now becoming like this huge monster movie, mm-hmm. you know, like Godzilla or or King Kong, oh, yeah. in a sense where now it's Earth versus this entity, this this massive yeah. ancient cosmic creature that uh, you know. How do we fight this thing? Mm-hmm. So, where would you see this kind of going? Um, I would say, I mean, I mean, you would make a great movie, I think. Um, and I mean, you've probably seen Stranger Things, right? Yeah. So you know the episodic nature of these things sometimes work can work as well. So mm-hmm. you know, and comic books obviously are episodic. Yeah. So I mean, it would just depend on you know what kind of medium that you're trying to you know, um, 
executed in, you know. Right. So, like, movie, if, you know, I would expect in a movie that if they meet the monster, then there's going to be some type of huge battle. You know, that's going to be a finite thing. Like, at the end of this movie, it's going to be taken care of, like, in some way or shape or form. But if we're going to do a TV show, then we can kind of piece it out, you know, drag it on a little bit. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> or... Because it, it it could be almost like uh, the 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 season finale, like exactly. where we're, like where we go from here, right. you know. Because yeah, I I think that um, building that relationship with the community and that that there is kind of like this governmental um, um, element to it mm-hmm. as well. And I think um, yeah, I like the idea of Stranger Things. That well, we, you know, the really cool thing about Stranger Things is obviously it's inspired by the eighties, you know, uh-huh. those eighties you know E.T. and that kind of thing that, that that filmic style and it would be really interesting because you know in Jaws it was in the 70s and it has a distinct visual style you know <clears throat> to make a TV show that has that same kind of you know style so yeah yeah like you could even yeah like you could, it could be because I believe uh, shoot wasn't it uh, Jaws came out uh wasn't it in the 70s? I believe it was. It was 75, I think. 75. Yeah. So, um, this was, this is interesting too, uh, that, uh, you know, they would play older movies in theaters, mm-hmm. like, for, for years to come. And, uh, uh, my mom actually told me that, uh, that the first movie that she ever took me to like when I was a, like a baby I was just an infant mm-hmm. was Jaws no, really? like she had never seen Jaws in the theater so like she actually went with her mom and they watched it and so I that's <laughs> funny that that that's the first movie theater uh, experience I had yeah uh, was at Jaws like, I, I didn't know that so <laughs> it's funny that you know I kind of brought that up and my my mom told me about that um, that's awesome though yeah. <laughs> so this thing is just some of this thing is just, you know, it's not about it's not so cerebral. Some of it's just like how you feel about something is the, re- the reason why you go in a certain direction. You know, and, and sometimes you don't even know why. Right. <laughs> uh yeah, I it I it's a part of my past that uh I wasn't aware about and, and yeah, and and now like finding out about it and that uh you know, like a movie like Jaws that uh um Actually, I took my stepson to see it on the big screen and, like, to see him jump from a movie that came so out in 1975. Yeah. Like, there was so points, like, where he – and then, you know, he was even afraid of the water because of this movie. Well, it's funny thing about, you know, old <laughs> movies and, and, like, they still work. <clears throat> you know, like, when I was young, my mom would – she would always watch young uh, – she would always watch older films. And as a kid, like, you know, they're in black and white, maybe I was like, eh, I'm not really interested, like, this is boring to me. But now, like, getting older, I'll go back to those movies to watch them, and they, they're they very compelling, you know, and you, you don't really understand that as a kid, why these things are so compelling. But once you become, like, mature enough, and you go back to it, it's like, oh, man, that still works. It's black and white, but that's cool. Like, I, I kind of see what they're trying to do here. And so it was, like, that same kind of thing with Jaws, like, the, all those little moments, those jump scares and stuff, they still work great, you know? <laughs> This was this was also uh, an interesting thing um, was that uh, I actually pitched this idea to uh, Deshaun last mm-hmm. night. It was kind of like a preliminary pitch um, before I pitched it to you, and um, he kind of came up with these like really interesting ideas that like um, that what if you know since we know that Cthulhu is like kind of like this apocalyptic creature that wiped out the dinosaurs what if you know there's this huge war of course and we're to the point where uh we're going to lose like we've 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 uh We've used all of our options, and now it's gotten to the point where you know we're going to have to use nuclear warheads, mm-hmm. and and this this is going to lead to the end. Mm-hmm. Um, we weren't prepared, right. you know, in, in this situation, and we, I, uh, he wanted just earth to lose like it that like it it was inevitable this is there's no happy ending um and i was like and then i kind of pitched him like well what if like we feel like we're at the end and then there's like kind of like this kind of galactic 
Cthulhu police <laughs> that like kind of come down and 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 they're aware of like when this uh, like an entity like him wakes up on a planet mm-hmm. and and their their mission or goal is that uh, they want to take it out you know Mm -hmm. Uh, because these are the survivors of other planets that were destroyed by destroyed by this 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 entity and that like um you know like you could think of us as kind of like this parasitic uh you know uh, race that like has um like overpopulated and, mm. and, and is like draining the nutrients of our planet, yeah. and so it's it's maybe a good thing that like <laughs> uh, something like Cthulhu would wipe us out so that the planet can st- start over, and then uh, you know grow again, and then whatever evolves from that, yeah. um, you know then. You know, it's inevitable, like, Cthulhu will come back and then wipe them out. And it's right. just this ongoing cycle. But it's it's this, the, like, galactic police that, like, are trying to stop that. Mm-hmm. Like, that uh, they've they've been battling this thing for a long time now. Uh, just an idea um, on that front, you know, is just to have that, you know, it would be interesting if you had a character, like a galactic character that we don't know is one of those guys in the beginning. He's kind of like undercover, you know. Oh, interesting. He's kind of like guiding this process a little bit long, but you don't know. You got you don't ever really get that idea until the end when you kind of reveal like, oh, this guy is not what he seems. You know, he's something else. Like he was he was already kind of sent there as a way of like, uh, right. yeah, <clears throat> making sure that this thing never wakes up. Right, or, or that when it's or, or that when it does wake up that there's some type of like contingency plan you know ready to go you know right um, so. so you know that'd be kind of cool to have like that character on the shadows you know <laughs> that's cool I like that like that there's kind of like this mole yeah exactly. um, um, I like that uh, so where <laughs> where Deshaun said that that should lead to is that like that they do kill this thing mm-hmm. like that and they feel like that it's over and that like they have saved earth mm-hmm. but that was just one of its uh you know older uh children and then that then the huge cthulhu that that actually is the mother wakes up and then it's like this galactic uh cthulhu police are just like Sorry, guys. <laughs> There's no way to We're save out. you. We're out. <laughs> we'll, we'll go on to the next mission. Mm-hmm. And and they end up taking some of the humans along with them mm-hmm. that they feel are were the best, you know, warriors of this planet. And now they continue their, um, you know, their mission to, like, rid the universe of these these giant monsters cool, and stuff yeah. like that and th- and that's where it could like continue because like i think that um what deshaun likes is kind of like this more uh expansive well he 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 he, he actually wanted to end it like mm-hmm. he like i i kind of pitched him the idea of this like galactic police mm-hmm. and like to extend it because he was just like it should just end it should just be the the death of mankind and that's that's how it should end and like it's so it's a standalone story and i was like well since it is like a comic book i I, i'd like to have like an idea of like maybe where we could you know uh extend it off to Uh, and and then he liked the end the idea of like this galactic cthulhu police uh because another thing too is like um i mentioned with uh uh, at the very beginning was that there was this woman that goes insane because like they um one thing that hp lovecraft talks about is that like even um looking at this creature um it drives you insane mm-hmm. so like so i thought like maybe like you know if you look it straight in the eye then that that'll drive you insane Mm -hmm. um so that's like another problem that they have to deal with and i think that that would be like an interesting subplot is like that like you know uh 
like the world is so focused on social media and so like looking at pictures of it uh, mm -hmm. you know starts to drive everybody insane as well oh, yeah, so cool. that like kind of like leads to a further reason why we that's pretty cool concept. die as well is because that we're, now we're attacking each other because of of the the madness that it's driving what would be your ideal um like medium for this like your dream you know well i i like that um it's you know there's this there's this oh, you know huge story arc but like there's also like these mini story arcs that like right. that it, it it um you know once again it's about uh, a boat and catching the creature mm. and which is like an homage to jaws and then there's the next step the next story arc which would be like a big monster movie right. like godzilla gotcha. and then getting to the point where they're not going to win and then taking it the next step where now there's this galactic police that will help out and uh and then inevitably it doesn't work out and then that's that's a whole nother right. story arc from there and i think that it's like it's three big acts mm -hmm. that uh are like movies in itself, right? So it would be singular movies, yeah. And just but grow but they're yeah, but they grow on each other and they're connected and everything. So, and once again, like I feel like it's like an homage to the blockbuster. It's like mm -hmm. this is this was the beginning. Uh, Joss was the beginning, and like, and from there is like what it became. Like for instance, like. A monster movie that, like, like you know, like studios pour hundreds of millions of dollars into, and then and then we take it to the next level. It's just like this apocalyptic war mm -hmm. with like um, other races that are helping um, to rid this this uh, cosmic entity that's that's taken over the mm -hmm. the the universe. Slowly but surely. Sure, yeah. <laughs> little bit by little bit. L little bit by little bit. Yeah. So, I don't know. Like, I, I just never actually thought of it going that far. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I had the idea of uh, just the boat. Right, yeah. And, uh, and, and maybe, it, I mean, maybe it just, you know, maybe it is just the boat for a while, you know? And, mm -hmm. and you kind of just build off of that. You know? Right. Um, Expand it a little bit by little bit. Yeah, I think that one thing about... Uh, um, comic book uh, is the uh, series and um, just the the idea of uh, trying to tell a story through uh, you know that's both visually and you know the, there's also the writing side of it um, is that stories are told so quickly mm -hmm. um, like um, I have this other podcast that I'm working on uh, where like uh, my friend is like a screenwriter. He actually he's he's directed two films. One like um, had some success, uh, and then and then another one is that is just st stuck in like um, developmental developmental <laughs> hell. So yeah. um, and uh, like what he 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 enjoys, but also is is un unfortunately. Uh, uh, like I guess, like a bad thing about comics is that, uh, yeah, like it, you tell too much story so quickly, mm -hmm. and because um, like I've I've showed him some comic book series where it's like that was just four comics, and like it should have been expanded a little bit more, and and I think that that's what Hollywood already is doing. Like they've 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 realized that that. Um, movies and television series is um uh they're they're looking towards you know the comics and everything um and seeing that like wow these are these big stories that are like kind of little stories in this huge universe of of other stories and how they all relate to each other and and where they can expand it's, to it's crazy i feel like 
these movies, like these Marvel movies and stuff, are like are like the new comic books. You know, like they're like our era. Like back in the day, you would go get comic books for your superheroes, and they were all connected, and you would collect them and everything. And now, comic books, all while still important, um, I feel like like it's our generation's comic books. These movies, you know. Yeah, I, I think that uh, it's unfortunate too because like. Uh, just a lot more expensive <laughs> that you know people it's 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 uh I guess people aren't reading as much yeah. now they're not reading the comics it's 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 kind of crazy that like yeah like um like DC and Marvel have been struggling over the years you would think that they would uh be making a ton of money because of like how popular it is mm. with movies now but like they're still struggling yeah. um because uh <clears throat> Like people are like, why do I need to read the story when I could just see the movie? Right. And it's like, well, but there's so many other stories that like you know you could enjoy. Well, it's kind of like the the anime thing, which is like comic books back in the day were like we there's no way for us to like do this on the big screen. Like we have to draw it and we have to be able to. Speak. We still want to show you what our vision is and, and everything. And so we're gonna draw it for you and you're gonna be able to piece it together that way. And and anime was kind of like, well, we don't have the big budget that you know West, the Western world has at this time, so we're gonna draw it and and do it cinematic, like create our own cinematic experience through cartoons and and animation. And it was always like a compromise, you know, like we can't do this, so we're gonna do this and still get it to you, you know. And now it's like not so much of a compromise as it is like we have to spend all this, we're spending all this money now to like give you exactly what it is like we've been building for this you know yeah so long. well it's because it, now like technology is so great but um but it costs, it costs like money. so much money but it's also um but those those limitations that you put that you are placed in our like ours is like shows you how great you know people can be in those boxes that they place themselves in like in the comic book you know Feel. We have great artists and great writers that really push the boundaries of what comics can do and, and anime the same thing. And within those confines, they create really great stuff, you know. It's, mm -hmm. it's really good to see that. Yeah, and I, I, I just, I, it's it's unfortunate because I, I think that uh, we're, we're at an era right now where um, comics are taking a lot of risks. Um, um, with their characters and stories and 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 unfortunately like uh, the audience that they're writing towards like can like banish and like be so hate uh, like uh, can hate mm -hmm. like these big uh, <laughs> ideas that uh, like are kind of thrown into the the pond so to speak and like uh, I'm so passionate. <laughs> well, yeah, and I, I think that, like, yeah, it comes down to, like, uh, um, fans being so passionate yeah. about, like, uh, franchises and uh, and characters. And so, like, when, like, big changes are made, they're just like, nope. So that's Jedi. Less Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> Which, that would be, like, a whole podcast in itself right, that, right, like, right. I, I'd like to touch on with you. Because um, we recently saw it together. Right, and, yeah. like, just... Um, <laughs> and at first, you, you weren't the biggest fan of it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and then, like, I, I guess I was trying to lead you to the dark side. That, like, <laughs> yes, this Ryan Johnson yeah. has, has has taken some big chances. And, yeah. and, um, and we have to remember that, like... <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't focus so much on like these the older characters and right, the original yeah. story. And I just keep I just keep telling everybody that it's fun. Yeah, and that's the, at the end of the day, that's what you go with the movies for. So right, and I think that you can pick it all day. Yeah, you can, <laughs> and and you know I have my problems with it as well. But I but once again, like you go to a movie to laugh and have a good time yep. and see where this story takes us mm -hmm. and you know some people <laughs> just won't get over oh, certain man. things that uh this that movie does i saw it again i saw it a third time oh you saw it a third time yeah and i was like and, and it got it and i kind of know some things that kind of made it a little bit better for me like on the nitpicky side uh-huh 
But yeah, I mean, it's really not a bad two hours and forty minutes to you know sit there and watch a movie like. And it's the longer one too, and and I think that like it gives you a lot of story, and I feel like you 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 get your money's worth with that movie. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. (laughs) So, um, well, thank you for being on the show. Um, Thank you for having me again. Yeah. um, I think that's a good way to end it. Uh, And. the next episode, um, I'll have you back, and sure. you'll be pitching me an idea for uh, a story. Cool. So, uh, <laughs> hopefully you guys will check it out. Um, uh, real quick, um, is there any, like, websites or anything that you want to kind of, like, plug? That- uh, you guys, just, if you guys want to just check me out on Instagram, it's SJ Alexander Writing. S.J. Alexander writing. writing yeah. Don't you have a um, a website too? Uh, that one still in the process. Of it's still in the process. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, cool. Mm-hmm. Well, um, next episode we'll f- focus more on you and and uh, <laughs> and what you're bringing to. Uh, here comes the pitch. Sweet. All right. <laughs> <laughs>